Hi everyone, when my channel hit 5000 subscribers, I asked you what video you would like to see to celebrate this little milestone. And by a big lead, a top five tips video on Tommy's music was the winner. Now I won't be sharing any tips on practicing particular songs because well, that's what the tutorials are for. I would rather offer you five guidelines to keep in the back of your mind while practicing Tommy's music. And at the end of the video, I'll share my personal story on how I learned all of these things more or less directly from Tommy himself. Practice. Lots of Tommy stories on how he wrote songs start with I got from the airport to the hotel and I was itching to play my guitar. If you really want to break through in this style of playing, you have to learn how to like and love practicing the guitar. That means finding a good routine that minimizes frustration and maximizes results. I'll do a full video on how to practice these things efficiently in the future, but in the meantime, try to stick to this simple point. Practice every song in small sections like I go over them in the tutorials and practice slow enough so you can play everything cleanly and relaxed while still having some room to be able to keep track of everything you are doing wrong. Let me point out that the word relaxed is the most important word there. Also notice that speed or tempo do not come up in that sentence. Focus only, only on playing clean and relaxed. If you pick up the tempo and you feel some form of muscle tension coming up, then lower the tempo right away. If you play a certain part and you make a mistake, you should be able to identify the mistake so you can fix it. If you often think, well, that didn't sound right, but I have no idea what went wrong, you are still playing too fast. But as hard as you have to work for your guitar in this style, you should also make sure that your guitar isn't giving you a hard time along the way. Remember, you're not making things easy on yourself by playing any solo acoustic song. You have to take care of the bass line, the chords, the melody, and in some songs, even a small drum part. If you want to go full Tommy, there are a ton of extras like fast runs, loads of embellishments in the melody, and a few finger twisting chords to go along those first few challenges. So make all of this a little easier by setting up your guitar properly. After all, we are aiming for a relaxed playing style. And if your fretting hand is forced to push down really hard constantly, it will prove nearly impossible to relax your picking hand as well. We'll talk about Tommy's setup in a second, but this setup will not be attainable for everyone. So I first want to give you a broad guideline. First, you'll need four things, a guitar, a capo, the correct Allen key for the neck and a measuring rule. The point is to make your guitar play as easy as possible, but not everyone is comfortable or capable of setting up their own guitars. You will have to adjust neck relief and possibly do some work on the bridge saddle as well. If you have doubts about doing this yourself, please consult a guitar tech. I wouldn't want you to damage your guitar. First of all, take into account that string gauge and action have to work together. In the comments, I often get the question, how low is your action on your guitar? But the answer to that question is useless if you do not know what string gauge is being used. If you go for heavier strings, you can set up a lower action as well, since a thicker string has a less wide vibration path. I use 12 gauge strings and a low action and that is pretty close to what Tommy uses as well. The way you can check this is easy. Put a capo on the first fret and then measure the clearance between the bottom of the string and the top of the 13th fret. In my case, the low E string sits about 1.6 millimeters above the 13th fret and the high E string has a clearance of 1.2 millimeters. If you go for lighter strings, you should be prepared to raise your action slightly since the string's vibration path will be a bit wider. All in all, it's a matter of finding the right balance between string ten tension and action. And that will depend on the quality of your guitar as well as your or your guitar tech's ability to set it up. 
Tommy himself is extremely demanding in how his guitars are set up. Every guitar he buys is set up for him, including a refret of each guitar with jumbo frets. Yes, he refrets brand new guitars. For those who are not familiar with the concept, the jumbo frets are very tall and wide and if you fret a note, your fingers won't touch the fretboard underneath the strings. This gives you less friction and allows for easier bending, more fluent hammer-ons and pull-off runs. These frets are a standard feature on more rock and metal oriented guitars like Ibanez or Jackson, brands that market their guitars as, you guessed it, easily playable and built for speed. He then uses 12 gauge strings, sets the neck dead straight and takes the action as low as a guitar can take, probably even lower than the measurements I went over earlier. There are videos of Tommy here on YouTube where he presses down on the strings to fret the chord and you can't spot any change in the string position. That is an extremely low action. But be prepared to run into some resistance when asking your local guitar tech to lower the strings so close to the frets. This is not common for acoustic guitars and playing with such a low action on an acoustic guitar has serious consequences. Which brings us to point number three. The moment you get the action of your acoustic close to the measurements mentioned in the previous chapter, you will probably notice it right away. Fret buzzing will pop up instantly. But no worries, that is also the case with Tommy's guitar. Playing with such a low action will require an adjustment of your technique for most of us. It certainly was a bit adjustment for me at first. But watch Tommy play, watch his picking hand closely and it almost stares you in the face. He plays with an extremely light touch, which is necessary because of that low action. Digging in hard will instantly give fret buzz something he even uses as an effect sometimes. The amount of volume Tommy produces when he plays is a lot less than what most of us typically will produce. It's quite possible or even likely that Tommy's loudest parts are still lower in volume than the softest parts you are playing. And that is where the secret of that super relaxed picking hand technique lies. He is putting in the minimum amount of effort in terms of strength and force and he turns up the volume on his pickup amp or sound system. More on that later. Playing this softly is a big adjustment and you will often find yourself playing louder and louder simply because that is how you have always done it. Your body is probably already used to putting in a certain amount of physical strength when you play your guitar and it is likely that you will find yourself returning to those old habits without realizing it. It really takes a lot of focus in the beginning. Tommy himself has stated in interviews that his main technical focus is staying relaxed at all times and it should be the same thing when you are playing yourself. Getting that soft touch working isn't easy, but once you start incorporating all those playing styles he uses, finger style, thumb pick, plectrum, percussive parts, keeping an even volume is even a bigger challenge. But what about when you hear him play those loud and rambling sections where strings are rattling against the neck, those parts where it really seems as if he's going for it and it sounds as, as if he's going to play his guitar in half, well, that's him just slightly picking up the volume. Playing really loud like Bruce Springsteen busting out chords on his acoustic is simply impossible with the type of action that Tommy uses. But Tommy has one last major trick up his sleeve. His absolute mastery of the pickup system and the way he uses this in a live situation. That leads us straight into the next chapter. If you have ever been to a Tommy Emanuel live concert, you know what an intense experience it can be. You can hardly call it an acoustic concert, it's more of a full-on rock experience. Tommy knows how to use his pickup system like no one else. Mixing in the internal microphone when he needs it, pumping up the bass frequencies when he wants to make those thumb-picked bass lines drive the sound even more. He uses every trick in the book and he probably wrote several chapters of the book himself. Add to that his sound engineer, who 
drives the house sound system as if he is mixing a full band rather than just one guitar. He won't hesitate to go for a high volume setting and he doesn't shy away from using the subwoofer either. This is a part of the sound system that is usually reserved for the bass drum and the bass guitar. They really use everything at hand to really engulf you in a huge wave of sound. It is that huge sound that is in the back of our heads when we get to work on one of his songs and it is that huge sound that has most of us convinced that we have to play hard and loud while we should be doing the exact opposite. So whenever you go on YouTube in search of a certain song by Tommy, Try finding versions of him playing the song in the studio recorded with a microphone instead of live versions. The studio recordings tend to give a more realistic sound, much closer to what you can get out of your acoustic guitar at home. A good example is Fuel, if you listen to the live version. The percussive backbeats amplified through the pickup and the live PA system sound absolutely massive. But if you listen to the studio version recorded using microphones, you can instantly hear they are not played as loud as you might expect. This is also the reason why I do my teaser videos before each tutorial and why I do them in single takes and with as little EQ and effects as possible to give you a realistic view of what the sound uh, the song will sound like with just the acoustic guitar and without all that live sound trickery behind it. That being said, let's move on to the last entry. So now that you know all these things, how can this help you to play like Tommy or at least as close as we mortals can get? Well, we simply go down the checklist of everything I talked about in this video. First of all, Make sure your guitar doesn't block your progress. Are your strings rusty and dull? Change them. Is the action on your guitar too high? Set it up or have it set up by a guitar tech. But make sure your guitar plays as easily as possible. No guitar tech or tools around, then change to lighter strings. This is less ideal, but it will still help. The point is that your guitar should help you and not work against you. By doing this, we are hopefully making it possible to relax your fretting hand. Then we move on to the picking hand. As soon as your guitar is set up properly, get to work on playing with a light touch. The first step to take is to play a song you already know and play it as softly and quietly as possible. Focus on how relaxed your picking hand will feel. Make sure it feels as if you are not putting in any effort at all in terms of force and strength. That is the feeling you should always have when playing fingerstyle songs. Make sure you stay as relaxed as that all the way through the song. Focus mainly on the picking hand, keep the volume low. A lot of people will quickly shift back towards their old playing style without even realizing it. If you have a guitar with a built-in pickup, then you can even try to plug it in and really turn up the volume, forcing you to play really softly to keep the volume down. But if you do this, make sure you plug up the sound hole with a feedback buster. That's one of those rubber things that go right here. Learning to play with such a soft touch won't come overnight. It will be something to be aware of with each song you learn to play. Make sure that you focus on that relaxed and loose feeling with each new song you learn and that way it will grow into a natural feeling habit over time. As you practice songs, make sure to keep the tempo down as low as needed to maintain that relaxed feeling. That is the most important thing apart from playing cleanly. Playing fast will come by itself if you learn to play in a relaxed manner. Most of the, muscle, most of the time muscle tension will pop up before you start making actual mistakes, so keep an eye out for that subtle feeling in your hands, wrists and arms. If you practice with these pointers in the back of your head, then each song you learn will be a step in the right direction. Each song you learn will make your technique more relaxed and precise and each time you start a new song, you will take the overall progress of the previous songs and 
use it to your advantage in the next. If you keep playing with a, uh, a playing style that is based around strength and force, then each new song will feel equally difficult when you start it, no matter how long you have been playing. That is where I think the quickest way to playing like Tommy Emmanuel lies. I have used these pointers myself after years of struggling and they have really paid off for me. They allowed me to go from learning a song over a period of several months to getting most of them down in less than a week. I'm convinced they can help you as well. But how did I learn all of this suddenly after years of struggling? Well, I promised you a bit of a personal story in the beginning. You've listened so far, maybe you are interested in my personal story on meeting Tommy and how I learned almost all of this in one very intense evening. A question that will no doubt pop up sooner or later is how do you know all this or how can you be sure? And it is with some pride that I can claim I learned it from the master himself. During an almost scary experience involving Tommy. More than a decade ago, Tommy was kind enough to give me a private lesson. This was in the really early stages of his international solo acoustic career and Tommy was touring Europe for the first times uh, and he was booked in a venue really close to where I live. At this point in time, Tommy wasn't remotely close to the acoustic superstar he is now and I mustered up the courage just to send him an email through his management, asking for a private session. And he kindly obliged. It was that simple. I even have some footage of him listening to some of my own songs, but these uh, have been recorded with year 2000 technology, so they don't really hold up well. Tommy couldn't have been nicer. Uh, he was super focused throughout the session and he never gave the impression he would rather be somewhere else. Uh, later that night he played a great concert in a big venue, large enough 1200 12 seats, but only 40 people in the audience. It was a shame to see so few people turn up, but as I said, this was really early in his career. Tommy invited everyone to sit in the front row and he played his heart out. I already learned a lot that day, but the real eye-opener was far more recent. A few years ago, I opened a show for Tommy here in my hometown. I had been practicing hard and I took the initiative again, offering to open for him. Again, he accepted. I was preparing myself with an audience of 40 people in the back of my mind, realizing that Tommy had grown more popular, but at the same time taking into account that fingerstyle guitar in Belgium still isn't the most popular style of music. So I was prepared for a somewhat bigger crowd in the room, uh, and the venue Tommy played was capable of holding up to 1200 people, but there was a really nice club attached to it, and that is where Tommy would be playing but I wasn't prepared for what I was told the minute I arrived at the venue. The sound engineer, who was setting up the system, someone I knew already, started some small talk and said something along the lines of aren't you super nervous to go out there with just your guitar? To which I replied, yeah, it can be scary, it can be, but because the audience isn't that large, it usually passes by quickly. He just looked at me straight and said, well, the, the room is back tonight, we've sold out. Oh, so you've sold out the club? Yes, he said. So we moved the concert to the main hall and that has sold out as well. We are expecting over 1200 people. Plans of running away as fast as I could quickly sprung up, you know, faking explosive diarrhea and maybe even faking wasn't necessary, just bolting. No one would ever know that I was supposed to be there. 
Then the guy added, oh, we put your name on the ticket. We thought it would be nice as a means of exposure. So at this point, I am dying a thousand deaths a minute and Tommy hasn't even arrived yet. Luckily, I was confident enough about my abilities and preparation and I quickly regained control over my nerves. So Tommy was playing a big sold out venue and that is important to the story. This meant that he would play through a large sound system and I too would have to play through that same system for the opening set. At a certain point, Tommy walks into the venue after a brief introduction. He gets to work uh, while I stand next to Tommy's uh, sound engineer. He blows through the sound check, flooring everyone in the, in the room who has never heard about Tommy before. Open mouths everywhere, it sounded brilliant, but I didn't notice anything special yet. After Tommy finished his sound check, it was my turn. And from the moment I plugged my guitar in, I immediately realized that this was a different ball game than what I had been playing up to that point. When I plugged in my trusty old Martin J40 in a sound system that was set up for Tommy, it didn't feel like an acoustic guitar anymore. It was more like an electric guitar through a distortion pedal into a full Marshall stack pumping at full volume. It was insane. Feeling your guitar drive the subwoofers with each bass note, making the stage rumble, melody notes flying out of the speakers with the lightest touch, I had never felt anything like it. And I do admit, I got a lot more nervous at that point and a lot less certain that things would turn out fine that night. Luckily, I had been a professional freelance guitar player for almost 10 years at that point, and I knew how to handle my nerves and a guitar in high volume situations. During sound check, I quickly regained my composure, got my muting skills on point and got everything working just fine. That night, I played one of the best sets of my life. Now, the single mistake, and during that set, it occurred to me that I was playing so much more relaxed than I had ever done before. The volume, the booming bass notes, everything jumping out of the guitar without me putting in the slightest effort. And then I realized that Tommy plays the acoustic guitar completely different from what most of us do. Amplified so loud that you actually have to hold back your picking hand instead of digging in. And by not digging in, my picking hand and my whole playing style relaxed. Something clicked for me on stage and that moment inspired the tips I have just shared with you. I have made more progress in the year after that than in the 10 years before, just by following these easy guidelines. To conclude the story of that night, I'm always very critical of myself and my playing, but I still can't think of anything I would like to change to that night. Now, the single mistake, a great sound, a warm and welcoming audience, a night I will no doubt remember forever. I was so into the moment after the show that I completely forgot to set up my merchandise stand after my set. When I finally came around to it after Tommy's show and after a lengthy chat with Tommy, the salesman who worked for Tommy told me, you, you wouldn't believe how many people I had to turn away after your set. If you would have been here, you would have probably sold out everything you had. Well, there goes my business instinct right there. And the best memory of them all, before my uh, opening set, I was warming up in a small dressing room. None of these dressing rooms had doors, but they had curtains to close them off, so the sound carries through them. As I'm warming up by playing one of my own songs, I suddenly feel a pat on my shoulder by this massive hand. And as I turn around, a bit startled, there's Tommy in the doorway, smiling, holding his guitar, going, yeah, brother, yeah, sounds great, sounds great. I, I still get chills when I think about that moment and the, the venue itself maintains a very strict no pictures or video policy. So all that I have of that night are very, a few very sneaky shots made by my girlfriend, but the memory is still very clear in my head. Well, this video once again turned out a lot longer than intended. Thank you for watching. I hope you find some merit in these tips. I know these rules have helped me a great deal and I hope they work out for you too. Take care and see you next time. Bye bye.